About a year ago, from the date that this video was published, I dropped my Ducati Supersport and I bent the rear brake lever and pin. Whoa! Oh, shit. I decided to fix it myself as a learning exercise and this video will detail how I did it, but a word of warning, uh, because as we don't have any access to the Ducati workshop manual for our Supersport, and I'm no motorcycle mechanic, you really shouldn't take this as how-to advice, but I do hope it gives you some tips for what's involved if you ever need to do it yourself. It's been a week since I dropped this lovely machine <clears throat> and it did bend the rear brake lever and the pin holding it into the footrest holder plate so the job today is to replace this. Look at this. A pretty Duke bike sliders are trashed but they did their job fairings completely undamaged and my lovely Sado racing bar ends have this plastic cap on the end which is replaceable thankfully so I've got a couple of them on order and that was pretty much the only damage that dropping it did apart well, apart from the damage to my ego, I guess. It's taken a week for the sting to wear off. But anyway, this video is about replacing this thing. I've managed to get a bit of information from different places, um, put it together, and hopefully it's all I need to get this thing replaced, but we'll see. It'll be a bit of a learn as I go. Anyway, the first thing I want to do is keep the rear brake master cylinder out of the way so I don't put any stress on the, the brake line. So I'm just going to support it to the subframe and detach it from the, the foot peg mounting um, frame. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove this because no matter what I do to try and get an Allen key up, into the pin that holds the brake lever on, everything's in the way. Uh, the exhaust is in the way. Uh, there's not a lot of space back in there, so even if I managed to loosen it, I don't think I could get it out far enough to get the pin all the way out, so this thing really has to come off. This is a 5mm. I just want to get them loosened enough and I'm going to unclip the little quick fastener that holds the... I'll bring you in and show you. This little quick fastener that just holds the brake lever to the activating rod for the master cylinder. in the background oh my god they're annoying in the morning so loud a bit of free bitumen that feels relatively free now I think I'll leave it there for now this is next. I 
on the Super Sport Forum, someone posted about using a welding two 24 mil nuts together to fit in here. I happen to have a coupling nut that's exactly the right size with a oh, my lovely husband put a bit of tape on it just to give it an extra snug fit and to not damage anything so if I get that in very gently that just gets into place nicely so I just need to get the right socket to undo that now I think the socket that I have got just goes on way too far so I'm going to put a few washers in there just to space it out a little. So there we go, a few washers in there. Let's see. Well, that's not easy for me. Ooh, there we have it. There we have it. It's out. So this is a 15 mil nut on a 14 mil bolt. Goes all the way through. Um, so let's see if I can get that undone. Well, the thing with this is, because it's part of holding the bike together, I'm leaving the bolt in there. If it stays in there. There we go, without the weight of the ratchet on the other side, it's staying in there. Next is the one that I'm most concerned about down here because that bolt goes through an adjuster with a ring nut on it. I haven't got a tool for the ring nut and I don't think I have to take that out. I think if I get this bolt out, that should be all that's needed to release the footrest plate from the engine. So this one is a 14 mil socket. is the disassembly instructions in the manual don't say anything about having to separate the ring nut from the adjuster just the assembly instructions say to do it so I'm assuming they're talking about assembling from scratch which I might not need to do ideally this should just come away but we'll see last thing attaching this holder plate to the bike is a 6mm allen key bolt and it has a nut on the other side which I haven't been able to figure out how to get onto because <laughs> of the exhaust um, I don't know maybe I'll be able to release it without holding that nut on the back let's just see if some magic happens Yep, got to figure out a way to hold that nut on the back there. Get something in there. Maybe a small ratchet will do it. Stay tuned. After a bit of fussing around, this is out now. That's the, uh, the nut that goes on the um, inside of the subframe there to hold it. And the only way I could get it out was um, by using uh, a 12 mil socket, some anti-slip matting and my husband <laughs> with multi-grips holding the socket 
that was the only way to get anything in there and to get it released but anyway it's out now so that's all good let's see if this holder plate comes off without any nasty surprises I think I might just start detaching this. Um, break wheel, spring first, and now it's just the pin, which for some reason is loose. Maybe because I bashed it. Hopefully, it's not bent so badly. It might come out, you can see the, the movement of the brake lever because the pin's bent. don't know if you can see that, it's pretty bent. An offering to the gods of two-wheeled misadventure. This is the new part. Just in case you want to know. So for the new brake lever I need to get the little um, screw and nut that activates the brake light off the old lever and into this new one and it comes out with a little nut on the underside and then this screw And it pretty much just screws all the way in. I'll just do it finger tight. I'm sure you can adjust that. That's that and 11. It's 10. It doesn't need a lot of force on it, but just fitting a spanner around that in the space available is a little bit dodgy. There we go. Maybe a tiny bit more. O-rings are next. And they need a little bit of lubricant. I think I'm just using some standard o-ring lubrication from some other kit. Oh that's right there's a washer too. Their parts diagrams are good, hey, they show you the order everything's got to go in. It seems like I got it started now. Now the torque on that I think is 25 newton meters, 24 newton meters and by the way that comes with um, thread locker already on it, no need to add anything. So this pin's done up now, um, torqued up to 24 newton meters uh, with a little help from my husband to hold the plate while I torqued it up um, and I think we're ready to start reassembling. for realigning everything. Right, so it's back on. 
Now it's just a question, I guess, of doing everything up. There is a grease bee, which apparently is a molybdenum something or other grease. Um, high wearing and temperature resistant. Now, there is still so much left on here, and I don't happen to have any of it here anyway, so I am going to assume there's still plenty there and just do these things back up. Now, this is the one that goes through the engine to the other side. I'll just try and get it started and then tighten it and then torque it because yay it's got to be torqued to 60 newton meters One of the advantages of small hands, I guess, is retrieving lost sockets and bits and pieces from the bowels of the motorcycle. Now we start this one. It's obviously lined up, it's going straight in, which is good. I followed the instructions in the manual and it kind of surprises me that you would talk up something before you had everything else started. But that seems to be the way it went. I don't know if something's missing from the manual or whether um, there's just common knowledge that I don't have. But yeah, like when you're doing up head bolts on an engine, there's a, there's a specific sequence that you follow in talking them all up in stages. I would have thought something like that would have applied here. Maybe it does. Maybe I've made a mistake. But anyway... I'm following the manual. Yep. And we start special screw in the middle here. Now this gets tightened with a 14mm socket to 45 newton meters. And then lastly, this one will get tightened to 72 newton meters. And 72. It didn't take much more. Okay. All assembled. I'll get this return spring back on. Screw these back in.
these uh, little lining up paint marks didn't line up so I'm guessing I've put the bolts in around the wrong way and I'd prefer them to line up if possible so I will swap them. These really weren't very tight at all. And that lines up at about the same tightness I thought they would be at. This one goes another round. That's at least I can check them. The last part I have left is the special little click fastener. And that just slips on pretty easy. I think the job's done. That already feels heaps better. You could really tell the pin was bent before I disassembled it just by looking behind. You could just see the skew between the face of the um, brake lever and the, the face of the the um, mount plate. So I've got to test the brake light, make sure I've got that activating at the right time and make sure that the brakes are actually working. They were working before, it's just the lever was really dodgy in its operation. I think it took me a couple of hours to research how to do this. And I started... Oh. I want to say two and a half hours ago. That's a lot of stuffing around figuring out what tools I needed and what else needed to be done that I didn't find in my research. So yeah, not hard, time consuming only because I'd never, never done it and didn't really know what to expect. But everything else went relatively smoothly. If I hadn't dropped the bike, I wouldn't have needed to do it in the first place. So, back to car park practice for doing tight U-turns. Wish me luck. So yeah, I have returned to more regular car park practice to get my U-turns tighter on the Super Sport. It is not the easiest bike to do tight U-turns on, let me assure you. On my Ducati Scrambler, I could do U-turns inside of two car park spaces, with practice of course, but not yet on the Super Sport. I'm barely getting inside of three. Maybe I'll give you an update on that sometime in the future. In the meantime, happy riding.